since it was created, we ask again, why is the Home Office still a nightmare? Let's start by speaking to Sir John Grieve. He was the Permanent Secretary in the Home Office. That's the highest ranking civil servant uh, running the Home Office between 2001 and 2005. Good morning, John. Yeah, morning. Um, what is the is the Home Office a nightmare? And if so, why? Um, well, it's certainly embattled. And I recognise the sort of criticisms from 15 years ago when I was there and we were struggling then with um, a crisis of asylum seekers coming through the Channel Tunnel and on, on lorries and so on. Um, I think it's um, two things I'd say. Firstly, it's important to distinguish um, whether you're talking about administrative incompetence or decisions you don't like. So uh, on the Ukraine, for example, it's perfectly clear that the ministers decided early on they were not going to follow the EU in allowing visa-free access. And therefore, they had to set up visa schemes. And visa schemes means you have to have forms, you've got to have process, you've got to have rules, you've got to make identity checks and so on. Now, uh, I think a lot of the criticism of the Home Office is, well, we're not, we're not letting enough people in quickly enough. There's a lot of bureaucracy involved, and that was a decision by ministers to introduce visas, special visa schemes, and, and you've just announced the latest one. And I suppose, I, I suppose that's a distinction, isn't it? Is that some of the criticism is, well, why are there all these forms? And it's well, because we're not, you know, we're still requiring visas. I suppose the, the knock on criticism is that actually for the first 10 days, two weeks of the Ukrainian conflict, we got a series of um, uh, announcements going off half cocked. We were told there was going to be a processing centre in Calais. Then we were told it was going to be in Lille. Then it turns out it's in Arras. Uh, and the, the, the ability to then process these applications, particularly when we went through a, a reasonably uh, similar uh, situation last summer with uh, Afghans too, the, the, even on their own terms, they, it appears not to be a world-beating, bespoke uh, system that sometimes the government likes to boast. Yeah, I'm, I think it's very difficult to set up these systems. Um, you get sudden bursts of activity. As you say, this isn't the first humanitarian crisis. Um, we had Syria, we had Afghanistan, and in each of those cases, there was a grinding of the gears while we tried to set up special schemes to allow a limited number of people to come into the UK. And we're in the same situation in the Ukraine. Um, I think. Um, Obviously, on the borders of Europe, um, the EU actually borders the Ukraine. It's a much simpler question, which is, here are the people at the border. Are you going to let them in or not? And they've decided to let them in and give them a three-year pass without asking them to fill in any forms. Um, as I say, we could have joined that. Um, but post-Brexit, obviously, we decided we, 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 didn't, we didn't have to and we decided not to. Um, yeah, but you could always do it quicker. You could uh, you could get hold of more staff, but cranking up a machine to handle tens of thousands of visa applications isn't that easy. One of the um, criticisms that seems to come up all the time is that the Home Office is too big. It just tries to do too much, whether it's policing or immigration or national security um, and so on. Um, and there was more of this at the weekend. Civil, you know. Friends, allies of Priti Patel saying it's like trying to turn a super tanker. But actually, if you look at the figures, um, it's what the fifth biggest government department. It's behind, it's about half the size of the Department for Work and Pensions and the Ministry of Justice, which was just hived off from it um, uh, back under New Labour. It's smaller than HMRC. It's smaller than the Ministry of Defence. Um, I know it was just after your time when you were there at the Home Office when John Reid famously said it wasn't fit for purpose. Is there, is there, is there any way of ever making the Home Office fit for purpose, do you think? I think it's, I think the Home Office is made up of some different departments. It's much smaller than it used to be. It is effectively a Ministry of the Interior. It used to be the Ministry of Justice as well. Uh, I don't think it's too big in itself, but there are extreme pressures on it. First of all, political pressures. The, especially around immigration and terrorism um, and policing. 
the, the, these are frontline political issues which attract a lot of criticism, attention, and so on. Um, and secondly, they're all difficult areas. I mean, immigration and to some extent policing are, are millions of different cases and each case can go wrong. So uh, an, uh, an organization like the Home Office has lives with the possibility, firstly, that it will make the wrong decision, let the wrong person in or refuse the wrong person today. And secondly, it's got a back catalog of mistakes that will have happened over the last 10 years, each of which could turn out to be a front page news. And I think, you know, moving, I, I worked in various departments. I cannot remember any department which was so fully in the headlines day by day by day. The press cuttings for the Home Office were three or four times as thick as those in the Treasury or the Department of Education. And that means that every mistake you make or are alleged to have made is liable to be on the front page. And just in terms of how long it would take to shift the culture, again, there were allies of Priti Patel at the weekend and from Number 10 sources too saying, well, it's a, it's the culture of it, you know, Priti's hard on, on immigration and so on and the lefty liberal hand-wringing officials don't want to get on and implement it and all that sort of thing. Um, and yet you sort of point out, well, you know, you've been Home Secretary now for almost three years. The concern has been in power for almost... 12. How long does it take to turn a department around, do you think, John? Well, the culture of the Home Office is, is first of all, there isn't a single culture. There are different parts of the organisation. There are thousands of people working for it and they have a variety of views. But one constant is they try and do what the government's asking them to do. And actually, the pressure from the government for more than the last 10 years, but certainly for the last 10 years, has been consistently on getting tougher on immigration, being more difficult, making it more difficult to come here and pushing people out who, sh who have arrived who shouldn't have arrived. And successive Home Secretaries, Mrs May was very prominent in this, um, as well as the current Home, Home Secretary, have come in with a view that the department's hopelessly wet and that it needs a big shake-up. Those, those pressures, of course, affect how the department behaves and make them sceptical of claims and perhaps make them slower to set up new schemes for relaxed access than they otherwise would be. There have been no prizes for being um, relaxed about immigration controls in the Home Office for as long as I can remember. So, John, it's really good to speak to you. Thank you very much for giving us that perspective from a from a civil servant's, former civil servant's perspective, Sir John Geever was Permanent Secretary at the Home Office from 2001 to 2005.